During my videos, I unconsciously use a lot of shortcuts. In this video, I want to share my most commonly used shortcuts, which I think any starting Affinity user should memorize as soon as possible. As a quick note, I'm using the Mac version of Affinity, so keep in mind if you're using Windows, the command key will map to the control key and the option key to the alt key in Windows. The V key is a quick way of enabling the select tool, allowing you to move and transform an object. Command J is maybe my most used shortcut and allows you to make a quick copy of the selected layers or object. You can also use the copy paste shortcuts, but from my experience, the command J has a lesser lag, especially with large images, as the image is not copied to the clipboard of the operating system. Another reason why you should use the command J is the power duplicate function. The duplicate function remembers your last transformation of the previous duplicate and applies them when you do a follow-up duplicate. Let me demonstrate this by adding a piece of text. We can immediately add text to our document by pressing the T key. Now that I have the text tool selected, let me add a text and get it ready to show you the power duplicate function. So I have made the first duplicate. And here is another shortcut worth memorizing. Keeping the command key pressed while resizing an object will resize it from the center. Now that I have applied the transformation on the duplicate, I can press the command J shortcut and as you see the same transformation is being reapplied for each duplicate edit. As we have a lot of duplicates it would make sense to group them. We can select multiple layers by selecting a layer and while holding the shift key pressing the last layer. To group these selected layers just press command G. Easy peasy. This is something I can't live without. You can use the zoom tool or the zoom shortcuts, but nothing works as smoothly as being able to scroll with your mouse wheel. Keeping the option key pressed anytime while scrolling your wheel will zoom in and out the document. While working on a document, you will be zooming in and out quite a lot. To get back to see the full image again, Command 0 is the shortcut key you should use. Let's get back to the mountain image and make another duplicate of the cloud, which I will position over the top of the mountain. I'm going to mask it, so let's add a layer mask. To use the mask, we probably will need the brush tool. Pressing the B key selects the brush tool. However, keep in mind there is a catch. Pressing B multiple times will cycle through the different brush tools. So make sure you have the right brush tool before continuing. For masking, you mostly use the colors black and white. You can use the X key to quickly change between the two colors in the color panel. This allows you to quickly mask or unmask areas. Sometimes you mask the opposite way, as this is easier to do. You can use the command I shortcut to invert your mask. By the way, command I also works for pixel layers and just inverts the colors. While using the brush, you can use the bracket keys to quickly resize your brush size without needing to go to the brush panel. This is a big time saver, especially when you're masking. Ok, let me hide the current layers and paste a new image. With the command R, you can toggle the rulers. Usually I don't need rulers and most of the time I have them turned off. But rulers are super handy if you need guidelines. With the help of the rulers, you can drag a guideline to your document. For example, in this case I have added a horizontal guideline which is helping me to align the text. One thing I frequently use is fill layers, however there is no default shortcut for that, but in the affinity preferences you can assign a shortcut for it. I have used the option shift F key and after selecting a color I can just press that shortcut and I get a fill layer. Pretty awesome. 
Let me quickly add a mask to remove some parts of the text for this composition. I have accidentally changed the stroke color instead of the fill color. So here's the most important shortcut you probably know, Command Z, which will undo your last action. By the way, I have not found a shortcut to open up blend options in Affinity. So I'm using a tool called Keyboard Maestro, which can trigger mouse clicks. And in this case, I have mapped the Option R key to click on the Blend Ranges icon to open up the Blend Ranges. To wrap up, here are two shortcuts I don't use that much, but it is good to know them. First, the G key, which toggles between the gradient and the fill tool. This will allow you to quickly apply a fill or a gradient. The other shortcut is the Tab key, which toggles the UI panels. I don't use it that much, but if you're working on a smaller screen, it is definitely worth using. Try to memorize these shortcuts as they will make working with Affinity a much smoother experience. There are many other shortcuts, but I think the ones I showed today are the basic shortcuts you will need the most. Thank you for watching and until the next video.